What is death wobble? So let's talk about what death wobble is. The first video here, we're gonna talk about the most common thing you see is everybody says, hey, I lifted my Jeep and now I can't drive over 35 without the steering wheel ripping out of my hands because it's wobbling like crazy. Um, so that's, death wobble is gonna be a sheer violent wobble. It's not gonna be a little bit of bump steer. It's not gonna be a little shimmy or anything like that. What we're really looking for is a flat out violent shake of the front axle. Any vehicle that is a solid front axle with links in the front can have it. So we're talking XJs, TJs, MJs, JKs, even the new JL in stock form getting it. So it's kind of interesting. Um, you can run into it in a three quarter ton truck or a one ton truck like your Fords and your Dodges. And that can be flat out violent when it does that. Now, if you put on the internet, well, hey, I got death wobble, you're gonna get 10,000 things because there's there is a lot of things that can cause it, but we want to look for the root cause, not just throwing a Band-Aid on it or anything like that. So a common one is, let's say, hey, I lifted my Jeep, now I have death wobble. Well, what did you change? That's what we always want to look at first, not before we throw a full new XYZ and all, spend all kinds of money. Let's look at what we changed and why it had an impact on having the vehicle drive the way it does now. So these are, I'm a mechanic, I am not an artist. I did my best drawing these, but this will explain just a rough idea. So our stock suspension form is if we said lower ball joint, upper ball joint, we wanna see a forward rake to it, just like a chopper motorcycle, okay? So you got an upper, ball, upper control arm and a lower control arm, and your front drive shaft coming into the front axle. Now, your coil spring is gonna come right in here. If we take that, and we put a longer coil spring in, what it's gonna do is obviously lift the vehicle up so we can fit some bigger tires, get some more travel out of the suspension, that's good. But what it did is it just tilted that lower ball joint further reverse and we got negative caster. The best way to describe negative caster is everybody's pushed a shopping cart. A shopping cart will turn on a dime, it's great. Try driving it fast or pushing it across the parking lot really fast, you get that shimmy. That shimmy right there is actually pretty much death wobble in a Jeep. It's if you hook those both together, it would be violent at that point. That's what you're really seeing when you lift your Jeep and poof, now I have death wobble. So one way or another, we have to push that lower control or that lower control arm longer and we gotta push that lower ball joint out further forward to get our caster angle right here back to spec or even better than spec if we could because the further forward I push that, the more resistance I'm gonna feel. It's just like driving a chopper motorcycle. The further you put that rake on there, the more fight you're gonna have. And we run into that in the shop all the time. Let's say, um, JK, a three inch lift. For the most part, a lot of your manufacturers out there, they're not including lower control arms or caster shims or anything like that. Well, the reason behind that is, it's made to be with a full kit. They're, they leave it that way so if you add a long arm kit to it, if you add some control arms or anything like that, you didn't have to buy it in that initial kit. Regardless, if you're lifting it, you really should be bringing it at least back to spec. And if you, the only way to get back to spec is to make this lower control arm longer one way or another through caster shims or an adjustable control arm at that point. So we bring the Jeep in, it's, it's darty, it's, it's kind of loose, or if we hit a bump, and then it goes into a violent death wobble till you stop. Well, what's really happening is that suspension, when you hit a bump, it's not so much the compression that's causing the death wobble, it's the release of it. Then it goes into just like your caster on the front of a shopping cart. We have a violent, darty Jeep driving down the road and you have to bring it to a stop to relax it a little bit to get it just barely back into spec where it'll kind of drive all right and then you're good to go again. And a lot of that time you're driving that Jeep, it's on the verge of shaking yourself to death. So what do we do? Do we put a stabilizer on it, like a fancy steering? No, please don't do that. That's not gonna fix it. So if we take this lower control arm and either some way make it longer through putting an adjustable one on, putting a longer arm on, putting a caster shim in there and pushing that lower ball joint out further, we're gonna have a lot more resistance. And we get them in all the, sh all the time at the shop, everybody, they always say the same thing. They get back, well, my steering's tighter. Well, no, we didn't tighten up your steering. Your steering's always been the same. It's still the same. 
it's what we did is we addressed your caster issue that when you lifted it, you tilted it away and took away. So that's why when you're looking at kits, I understand it's overwhelming. There's so many options out there. Well, a lot of the times the kits aren't full systems. And the reason behind that is so you can mix and match and you can make your Jeep exactly how you want to be. But you got to know that we at least, bare minimum, we got to address the caster in the darn thing so it'll drive down the road nice and tight and it will want to go straight. Because the more, like a chopper motorcycle, we can make it, the more it's going to want to go straight. You let go of the steering wheel and it, it wants to go straight. Now when we turn a corner, it wants to whip back and straighten itself out. If we have a Jeep, and we've had them all the time, where um, I make a corner in it and I have to physically bring it back, that's that Jeep's just destined to wobble because it doesn't have enough positive caster in it. Now, the only thing stopping us to put more positive caster in it, I mean, I can put as much as I want to push that axle out there and give you a ton of um, feeling in the steering and, and get it super tight. What's going to stop us? Obviously, there's a point that it's too much. We don't want it whipping right back and, and having to fight it to turn. But the next thing to think about is, okay, this is a high pinion front axle. If we did a low pinion, you, your angle will be fast, or more so is our front drive shaft angle. So that's gonna be what we gotta do is find that happy medium where we have enough positive caster and that ball joints out far enough forward that gives us a nice steering feel and we're not getting a vibration out of that front drive shaft. So the further, like I say, once we push this forward, we're gonna put a little bit more of an angle into that front drive shaft. Once we start talking four inch lifts, above four inches, um, anything else like that, then we are into that threshold where it's, it can be a little difficult and we gotta find that happy medium where the Jeep drives well, but it's not tearing apart that front pinion with the front angle being too steep. And that's a, that's a feel that the only way you're gonna get that is by doing adjustments and getting the Jeep just to be happy. Now there's tons of other things that can cause death wobble and we'll do more videos explaining that, breaking it down so at least you can understand why you have it, because once we understand why you have it or what change that's causing it, then we can properly diagnose it with the right, the right components, the right stronger components to get everything driving good where the Jeep should be, because they really should drive well. Um, if you're the days of, hey, I lifted it and I have to ex like understand that it's gonna ride like a brick wagon, that it's going to shake, it, it's, it's not going to, it's going to be kind of soft. That's, that's, those are years ago. We have the technology to fix it. Let's sit down, let's understand what's causing it, and then let's fix it. And then you'll have a Jeep that drives great on the highway, and life's a lot better that way. It's kind of fun to be able to cruise 70, 80 down the highway and then go have some fun out on the trails. Um, so that's, I mean, this is the, the, the most basic way to look at it. Like I say, there's tons of things that can cause it. We'll do a lot more videos, but this right here is my number one that we do at the shop all day long, fixing them, is addressing the caster in it. And that's that's a simple one to understand, is the idea that once I lift it, I'm pushing it pushing it down away from the frame, bringing that lower ball joint back, and right there is how, it, how those wheels are pivoting. They're pivoting right in those ball joints. So the further I can push it forward, the happier that Jeep's gonna be, the more it's gonna wanna drive straight.